Good morning, everybody. It's Ned over My Philippine Dreams. One of the things I try to talk about is the good, the bad, and the ugly of expatriate life in the Philippines. And unfortunately, we have another incident of the ugly occurring. And this is a this is allegedly concerns a ex-marine, an American, Filipino-American, to be more specific, ex-marine, and a shooting that occurred yesterday. Violence of all kinds can occur as a result of property disputes in the Philippines. We've t actually done videos on this before, whether it be between disgruntled neighbors or with family members squabbling over a family plot, things can escalate rather quickly here in the Philippines. Add in bereavement over a wife and a mother's recent death, arguments over inheritance, and an assault rifle, and you have what unfolded yesterday in Metro Cebu City. Sorry, Cebu. Keep in mind that there is some confusion as to the specific details of this incident. This just occurred yesterday. It started about 11 a.m. Today is May 18th, so this occurred May 17th, 2019. Whenever possible, I have tried to use language to underscore this detail. Let's get into it. A now deceased Filipino American retired Marine allegedly shot and killed both his stepson and the local barangay captain in the city of Talisa yesterday on Cebu Island. The slain Filipino American has been identified as Segundino Tor Franco, also known as Dean. The shooting seems to have been initiated through a property and inheritance dispute between the retired U.S. Marine Tor Franco and his 30 year old stepson. Jed Ibanez. Jed Ibanez. Following the death of Tor Franco's wife and Ibanez's mother some 40 days before. According to reports, the dispute was over the wife's home and two cars which were purchased during the wife's first marriage and which the stepson felt he was entitled to as Tor Franco had not purchased them. The barangay captain, one Jimmy Bartelik, was asked to step in and negotiate a settlement in the dispute. This is one thing they do in the Philippines before they go to like civil court or anything. They'll bring in the barangay captain. That's the local neighborhood captain. He's the leader and he tries to negotiate a settlement. Reports indicate that they were unable to come to an agreement in the barangay hall. So Tor Frank invited them to his home in order to retrieve and review title documents. Five individuals, including the barangay captain and the stepson, later approached the residents. Reports vary at this point, with some saying that Tor Franco met them with a, quote, hail of gunfire or chased them out of the house. Regardless of the precipitating factors, the stepson and barangay captain were both shot down and killed, while the other three fled the scene. A mix of approximately 50 Philippine National Police officers and SWAT teams were then called in. The ranking officer called for Tor Franco to surrender, but the U.S. Marine apparently responded with gunshots. A gun battle between the barricaded American and the police then raged on for allegedly about two hours. According to reports, Tor Franco was wearing ballistic body armor and was said to be firing a Kalashnikov assault rifle, AK-47 or some variant there, thereof, AKM or something. At some point during the battle, the house was lit on fire. The gunfire continued for a while and then tapered off. Some reporting agencies stated that Tor Franco had succumbed to smoke inhalation and suffocated while the police stated that SWAT snipers had shot the ex-Marine. An overly dramatic news report from the Cebu Daily News stated, quote, that the former U.S. Marine did show his prowess in the field of combat during the shootout, but it could not match that of the determined Talisai police, end quote. Explosive ordnance disposal units were then called in as it was suspected that the U.S. Marine might be keeping explosive materials in the house. A search through the fire-ravaged rubble didn't turn up any such de devices, however. It is assumed at this point that Tor Franca had emigrated to the United States at some point, either with his family or by himself, in order to join the U.S. Marine Corps. The United States has a citizenship program for foreign nationals who serve in the armed forces. Tor Franca then apparently returned to the Philippines, met the now-deceased wife, and married her. It is not known if he had Philippine citizenship reinstated as Filipinos gaining U.S. citizenship are supposed to renounce their, for, their prior foreign citizenship. And I only bring this up because foreigners cannot have handguns or weapons in the Philippines, and he obviously had an AK-47, some sort of weapon. So again, this is just another example of how things can escalate rather quickly here in the Philippines, especially when it comes to property disputes, especially when it comes to inheritance issues, and especially when it comes to getting between somebody and their money. 
You don't want to do that here in the Philippines. You don't actually don't want to do that anywhere in the world. In the United States, you'll usually be met with civil court and all that stuff, the process. Here in the Philippines, they know that the justice system can take 5, 10, 15 years to settle these disputes. So sometimes things are taken into their own hand. Factor in the emotional context of just recently, he just his wife died 40 days ago and his son's mother. And now it's just it's a bad situation for all involved. This is basically a cowardly murder. Uh, I don't know how it's going to pan out, but again, it's something to keep in mind and it's something that we can all learn something from. All right, on that happy note, this is Ned over my Philippine dreams. It's really hot today, and I'll see you next time. Be safe and be well. Bye. Hey, if you consider our work to be of any value, consider supporting us on Patreon. If you're a Patreon, you get a free copy of my ebook, and we do monthly Google Hangouts. So consider doing that, if you would, please.